Okay, so you guys doing good tonight? Good. That's okay. I, I heard. Okay, so I heard. Uh, 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 so how are you guys doing tonight? You guys doing good? Good. Okay, that, that's better. That's better. All right, I'm doing. I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, during a semi-serious like portion tonight, my phone went flying out of my hand. So my bad. Sorry, Anna. You were speaking on my phone. Just it flew. It it did on its own. But anyways, so tonight. It's 2020, right? Guys, it's 2020. <laughs> right. So I'm glad 2020 got like a good response. So, okay, so it's 2020, and uh, we did a series uh, talking about, you know, if Jesus wanted to, like, get in the middle of your life and change it, would you be willing? So what we're going to go through uh, through winter and spring, we're going to go through the book of Philippians, on Wednesday night, so when you see me up here uh, teaching, uh, we're going to go through the book of Philippians, and as the question is up there already, why Philippians, right? Like, why go through that book? And some of you, like, you could be seniors right now, and you're thinking, okay, this is like my last months in youth group. Like, why go through this book specifically? And the reason why we're going to go through Philippians is this that what God told uh, this church? Like he he told them like really specific things he wanted from them. And when you think of a church, a church is made up of individuals, and a church is made up of people. And so what Jesus wanted to communicate to these people like a, a long time ago is the same thing he would want to communicate to you. So when we think about Philippians, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit later, like why specifically Philippians, but to understand like the church of Philippi, like this is totally a God thing. Like for this church to exist, it, it started in the heart of God. And I'll, let's go, we're going to cover like a quick brief history on how the church of Philippians got uh, planted. So tonight is more of an intro night on why Philippians is important and what we're going to see as we go through Philippians. So Philippians uh, chapter 16 verses 6 through 10, it says this, Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia, when they came to the border of, My of Mysia, they tried to enter uh, Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, uh, we, we got ready at once to leave from Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So from those verses, I want you to grab this point. Slide. What great things has Jesus placed on your heart to accomplish for his glory? What great things has Jesus placed on your heart to accomplish for his glory? glory, because you look back at those verses, you had Paul, and his goal, Paul wanted to go, he wanted to go to Asia to, to spread the gospel there, but every time Paul tried to go to Asia, like, God blocked it, that, like, God said, no, I don't want you to go to Asia, and then Paul, he could have gotten super frustrated, right, he could have said, hey, God, I'm trying to do a really good thing for you, and you won't let this happen, so what happened, you have Paul, one night, you know, I'm sure he's bending to God, like, God, why isn't this working? And God gave Paul a vision, and he saw this man in Macedonia, right, this place called Macedonia. This man is begging, and he's crying, hey, someone come preach the gospel to me. And that's when God gave Paul a new dream. So uh, how does that tie in to you? Because Paul's dream was to go to Asia, but God gave Paul a new dream to go to Macedonia instead. So how does that work with you? It's this. What dreams are you willing to let God give you? Like, what are you willing to allow Jesus to place on your heart? And what do I mean by that? Like, what, do you, what, what does it mean for Jesus to place something on your heart? It, it means this. What are those things that you do that, that really stir your heart? 
What, what are the things you do that in your heart you get a real passion for Christ? Those are the things that Jesus has placed on your heart. And whatever that looks like, maybe for some of you, it is to be a missionary. Maybe for some of you, it's to be on a sports team. Maybe for some of you, it's to be a better leader in our youth group. Well, whatever that dream is, are you willing to follow God in that? Or maybe here's a more important question. For some of you that have had dreams, and for some reason, it's not working in your life the way that you think it should, are you willing for God to give you a new dream? And that's what Paul did right there, that Paul had one dream, but he allowed God to give him something different. As we go into this new year, are, are you willing to hold your dreams loosely? Don't be so tight-fisted in what you're doing that you miss what Jesus might want to do differently. That, that who's to say that maybe the next great Christian whatever is in this room? That could be you, but are you willing to allow Jesus to give you a new dream? Or are you willing for Jesus to place things on your heart that you're going to accomplish for him? Which brings me to this next point, slide. Does, any, does that make sense to anyone? Okay, so what, what, does, what, what does this mean? And no, that's not me 20 years, so that's not my father. <laughs> I already heard those jokes coming. <laughs> okay, this is funny. Okay, Bryson, what, what does it mean? You know what? Huh. That, that, that's not what I was going for. But I could totally see, yeah, because she was, she stole money, became like a poor person got thrown in jail by a jail. And, okay, what? I messed that up? She robbed a bank. Got, oh, robbed a bank, got caught. Then went to jail. Yes, he lied. Wow. Wow, that's... Okay, I'm going to tell you what I really meant. Okay, Nate Hustle. It's what? How am I, how's that my life story? How how'd you get that? Okay, so pause. What this is, this is the story of the church of Philippi. This is the story of the Philippian church. When Paul went to Macedonia, he went to Philippi. And for some of you, uh, you might not know this, uh, the church in Philippi, the Philippian church, is the first church that was planted in Europe. So this is the story of the first church that got planted on the continent of Europe. So what happened, you had Paul, and he met this wealthy woman named Lydia. And as Paul was preaching the gospel, we're told this, that God opened the heart of Lydia to receive the gospel. And so, so Lydia and her family, they get saved. And as Paul... He's walking through this town, and one day, this slave girl that was demon-possessed, right? She was a fortune teller, and she kept on saying, hey, and she was mockingly saying, hey, this is Paul and Silas, and they're going to bring salvation from God. This is Paul and Silas, and they're going to bring salvation from God. And it said, like, later that Paul was so moved by her suffering, he told the demon to get out. It doesn't say that. It said he got frustrated with her, and he just got annoyed, and he turned around and said, demon, get out, and the demon did, and she got saved, and then what happened after that, uh, the owners of the slave girl, they got upset at Paul because she was the one bringing the money, so then they had Paul thrown in jail, so you have Paul and his buddy Silas, they got thrown into jail, and while they're in jail, you know, they're, pray they're praying to God, they're singing to God, and then God opened, like, the jail cells out, Right? And the jailer was about to take his life because he thought like all like the convicts got loose. But Paul said, hey, look, everyone is here. And then the jailer got saved. And then after that, Paul got kicked out of Philippi. But these are the people that are left behind to plant the church of Philippi. This is the Philippian church. These are like the core members. And if you realize this, these people have nothing in common. Right? You have a wealthy person, you have a slave girl, you have a jailer, and God said, yep, that's my church. 
that's, that's how the first church of Europe is going to look like. So what do we get uh, from that? It would be this. Uh, go to the next verse. Like, what would Jesus tell that church, right? It's what he would tell us. Like, what's the heart of Jesus? It's this. This is Jesus praying. Like, this is Jesus praying before he's betrayed. He says this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So what is Jesus praying for before he goes to the cross? He's praying for unity. He's praying that Christians would get along with each other. He says, hey, Father, I want them to be one as we are one. So what happens later? You have Paul. He got kicked out of Philippi, and he preaches the gospel to other places, and he gets thrown in jail. And while in jail, uh, the church in Philippi, they hear what's happening to Paul. And Paul says this, while I'm in jail, I want to write a letter to you. And this is what Paul wrote. Next verse. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Remember, this is an intro into what the book of Philippians is all about. So what is the book of Philippians all about? It's this verse right here. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that, what, that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. That what was the heart of Jesus for Christians? The heart of Jesus is this, that we would simply get along with each other, that we would have unity with each other. What does... Paul, what does Jesus tell the church in Philippi uh, through Paul? He tells them this, hey, be one, be one. So as we go through the book of Philippians, I want you to be thinking about this slide. Unity is key to a thriving life for Jesus. Unity is key for a thriving life in Jesus. And what does that mean? Because here, here's the thing. I know that maybe some of you are friends. Maybe some of you aren't friends, right? But you don't have really problems with anyone. Maybe some of you, like, hey, you know, we're not friends. And I also have problems with you. I, and, there's, and maybe there's just some stuff all in between. And here's this. As your youth pastor, I don't care if you all like each other. Right? And I, I get that. For some of you, you are not going to like someone in this room. I get that. Here's what I do care about, that you're respectful to each other, that, that, that you're kind to each other. Why? Because maybe if you're respectful to someone, maybe if you're kind to someone, maybe eventually you'll, you'll come to like that person. What was the heart of Jesus? He says, how is the world going to believe in me? It's through the unity that we have with each other. And who are you called to have unity with? Look around this room right now. Right? These are the people Jesus is calling you to have unity with right now. That whoever Jesus has placed in your life right now, that is who you're called to have unity with. Right? Especially if they are a believer. As we go into 2020, my goal is this, is that we will be a group that gets along. And maybe we always don't like each other, but we get along with each other. That regardless of our differences, what we have in common is greater. That's Christ. The very first church in Europe, it should have failed completely. You have a really wealthy person, a really poor person, and someone who's, who's a jailer, right? That's the first church in Europe. If I was a person, I was putting together a team, I wouldn't have gone with that team. But God said, that's my church. Why? Because they're so different. If they're going to get along, it's going to make the world pause and say, what do they have 
that we don't have. As a pastor, I want to see people grow closer to Jesus. I want to see people get saved. How does that happen? Not with me talking. It's with us getting along together. Unity. When it comes to Jesus, and if you look at your life with him, and you say, my, my life with Jesus isn't what I want it to be, pause for a moment and think about this. Who do you not have unity with? Who do you not have unity with? And if someone comes to mind, how about you pray for that person? I won't tell you go talk to that person tonight or anything. How about you simply pause in your heart and say, look, I'm going to pray for so-and-so tonight. Okay, not pray bad things for them, right? But, like, I'm going to pray good things. Like, hey, Jesus, change my heart about this person. Unity is key to a thriving life for Jesus. If you don't love someone in this room, right, that Jesus died for, I doubt you're ever going to have a close walk with them. Which brings us to this uh, slide, right? John 17, 25 through 26. So uh, one thing that Jesus wanted was unity, right? The second thing that Jesus wanted is this. This is his same prayer. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself might be in them. So what is Jesus doing? He's talking about his love. He is saying this, hey, Father, like, I want them to know the love that you have for me, that I have for you. I want that same love to be in them. I want that same love to be in my followers. And if you have that love of Jesus, like flowing through your life, right? Actually, that was cool. Flowing through your life. Like what type of personality should that bring about? Slide. Slide to the right. I messed up. Slide to the left. Uh, sorry, Philippians 4, 4 through 5, it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. This is Paul in jail. And what does Paul say in jail? He says rejoice. Why, why, like, why do you rejoice? How can you rejoice? It's this whole idea that the love of Jesus is so in your life. And what type of emotions, like what does that bring about? It brings about rejoicing in whatever situation you're in, which brings me to point number two. It's this. Life with Jesus is meant to be a joyful experience. Life with Jesus is meant to be a joyful experience that uh, I know some of you, I asked you, like, what should we talk about in youth group? Like, what should we talk about in cell groups? And some of you, you brought up anxiety. You, you brought up uh, stress. You, you brought up, like, how do I, like, handle situations that don't go my way? And these were all great topics. And how do you handle this? Life with Jesus is meant to be a joyful experience. Go back a slide. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice, right? That Paul is in jail when he writes to this church in Philippi, that he says, like, two things I want you to get is this. Have unity with each other and rejoice in whatever situation you find yourself in. So, so what does that mean to rejoice? It, it means this. It doesn't mean you have to be happy about what's happening to you, because there's something that should really break your heart that happens to you. Like, later in the book of Philippians, Paul talks about things that bring him sorrow, right? But what, what does rejoicing mean? It means this, not necessarily being happy about the situation you're in, but saying this, what is Jesus going to do in this situation? It's, it's an expectancy in your heart saying this. This is the situation that God has allowed me to be in right now. How is he going to work? 
how is he going to work? So no matter what situation you find yourself in life right now, the key to rejoicing is this. It's not that I'm happy that blank has happened to me, but in my heart, I'm excited to see, okay, what is Jesus going to accomplish through this situation? When Paul was in jail, Paul was like, hey, I'm in jail, but guess what? Jesus is going to do something with me through jail. Whatever you're going through in life right now, it's not that you're happy about the situation, but in your heart, the joy is this. How is Jesus going to work in this situation? Which brings me to my last point. Slide. The theme for Philippians and a theme for our lives should be this. Joyful unity. Joyful unity. So as we go through the book of Philippians, the main theme is going to be joyful unity. When you look at your life through winter and spring, ask yourself this, do I have joyful unity in my heart? And the two questions I want you to think about tonight are this. Is there anyone in this room, right, anyone who is a fellow brother or sister in Christ who you know you don't have unity with? Are you willing to pray for that person tonight? Not that you have to talk with them, but are you willing to pray for that person tonight so that God can give you a different perspective on them? And the second thing is this. Is there a situation where you need to find joy in? Is there a situation in your life where you have to say this, blank has happened to me. I'm not happy about this, but Jesus Give me a heart to see how you can work in this situation. As we go through the book of Philippians, remember this. That church was made up of individuals, and what Jesus wanted from that church was joyful unity. What Jesus wants from you right now in your life is joyful unity. To have a good Christian life, a theme that has to be part of it, is joyful unity. So I'm going to pray and ask the band to come up and sing. Uh, dear Jesus, we thank you for tonight, and we just, we just want to see how you're going to work uh, in our group. We want to see how you're going to work in our lives. Like, how are you going to make joyful unity uh, work in our lives and work in this group? And we love you, and we just want to just, like, be amazed at who you are, that, that you took this church that, that should have failed and you made it work because they were willing to come together and have joy. I pray for our group and pray for us as individuals that we're willing to do life together and we're willing to rejoice with each other in our victories and in our sad times. We love you and we give this, we give this prayer in your name.